Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to an encouraging word. I'm your old sister, Bonnie, and today we have a sister here with us. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Greetings. I'm Sister Whitney. <laughs> okay, and where are you from? Uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. And which temple do you attend? Uh, the Memphis Temple. Okay, and how is it there? Uh, it's great. Um, I know at first when we when they started, they were at a boys and girls club. And okay. After like uh, COVID, when we were able to get back in the church, we were, mm -hmm. we were blessed with a, our own temple. So that was great for us. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about your background. Were you always um, spiritual? Did you used to go to church before? Uh, not necessarily. I went, like, I was in and out only because my grandmother at the time, she was like, oh, you need to go to church. And I would just go sometimes just so <laughs> she could be happy for me to go. So I wasn't really spiritual or anything. I just would go because she would want me to go. Okay, so you went to church basically to please her. And what type of church was that, if you can recall? Um, I think it was uh, all denomination or something like that. All denomination? Yes. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Okay, very interesting. So um, when did you, when did you first hear about First Church? How did you hear about it? Uh, my first time hearing about First Church. Before, before you answer that question, were you ever baptized? I was I was baptized like probably like a couple of weeks after I heard about First Church. And that was in 2020. No, in the falls, in the church that you was going to the oh, No. I was okay. okay. Baptized. All right. Continue. Continue. Okay. How did you hear about First Church? Uh, I heard about First Church um, 2020. It was like at the beginning of the pandemic when everything started closing down. My son actually was attending a school and he wanted to play basketball. And I was like meeting with the basketball coach to see what he could do to get on the basketball team. And somehow we got on like the conversation about like church. And at the time I was like ready to change. And I was like wanting to like know the truth. And I was like... Mm -hmm. I started going to my grandmother's church more often and I would take my Bible with me and I just open it and just get yeah, read one scripture and I was like, that's it. So <laughs> I started to get hungry for the truth. So I would like bounce around different churches trying to find mm -hmm. the truth. And somehow uh, back to the, the coach, we I asked him what church he attended and he told me about first church. Oh. And, um, yeah. And so he was like, we're low in, uh, inside of the girls and boys club. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was a preschool teacher down the street from the <laughs> where they were doing the service. Mm -hmm. So Wow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So I ended up going, attending the last service they had before they shut everything down during COVID. Mm -hmm. That was the first time me ever going. It was a different experience for me. I felt at home. I don't really know how to explain it, but I felt like all the things I was looking for, like it was there or whatever. And I was like, just so excited. And then probably like three weeks after that, I was baptized. Wow. It had you so, it, it, it grabbed you so good. Yeah. And I was <laughs> dipping the Bible, like there was <laughs> calling up uh, verses. And I was like, oh, it's so fast. I can't get to them that fast. <laughs> I just was so happy like I was there because I was like I've been looking for this I've been going to different churches trying to figure out like uh, what's true like everybody want to just read the scriptures and they don't want to break it down so I was just very like happy to be there and help like to be in the presence of a minister that was put up by pastors to be able to break down the scriptures very well mm -hmm. that's wonderful that's wonderful sis and I've heard on several occasions it's brothers and sisters that they, they are hungry, looking for something, you know, going from church to church and they're still not finding that, that thing then to fill that gap inside. And it's just wonderful to hear stories like these. And you said you got baptized dear so quick. 
I did. It was like, I believe, I want to say it was three weeks after um, my first time attending the service. After I went to the Boys and Girls Club, the brother asked me, he was like, so how did you like the ch uh, church? I was like, it's amazing. And so then he went on to tell me about Pastor Jenna Jennings. Mm -hmm. And so I started to watch him more often on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Wow, like this is amazing. Like he, he knows so much. And I just was like so grateful. And then like the day that I decided to get baptized, I know it was like a week before I actually got baptized. So I was like, I need to get baptized. Cause mm -hmm. like weird, I was like, man, I gotta get baptized. And so I wasn't able to do it that Sunday. So the following Sunday, just like March the 29th of 2020, I was able to get baptized that night. And I was wonderful. just so, so excited. So That's happy. wonderful. Sis. So um, let's talk a little bit about, because we know that it's not, it's not easy. No. It, especially in, in truth, because it's basically the truth. And it preaches, our apostle teaches the Bible to the T. You know, it's not like the other churches where you can, you know, you can wear pants and you can wear paws hair and stuff like that. Oh, uh, oh, was that, uh, I should ask you before, were you into those things wearing pants and oh, was, what was that before? Um, Before, I actually really didn't like jeans. I was like, but I did wear tights a lot because I like to be comfortable. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't like jeans, but I will wear tights a lot. And then, like, probably, like, a year before I came across the truth, like, I just wanted to change. Like, I wanted to wear more dresses. They wasn't, like, super short. They would go past my knees, but they wasn't as long as I wear them now. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just started changing, and I wanted to cover my body more. I remember, like, also that the summer before, I believe, uh, me and my family went to Florida, and, like, I had a bathing suit on, and I had, like, a uh, big tank talk on top of it trying to cover myself and my auntie she's like oh take it off and I'm like no I feel naked so <laughs> <laughs> I was like no so yeah. wow like it like I said like now that I look back like I believe God was dealing with me before I even like came across the truth of God like I want to cover my body more I stayed at home more I, I, I used to drink a lot I stopped drinking it was like a, it, he was just slowly dealing with me Wonderful. That's wonderful. That is so good. Because um, what about the head covering? Do you have any, did you have any struggle with the head covering? Because I know I did. Not really. Um, not even like with the hair as well. Like I um, started off wearing like wigs and I had like sew-ins and like, um, I had did like the big chop that everybody was doing, so I cut all my hair off. I let it grow back natural, and like I was like just embracing myself. Like I really, really wore makeup, so I just always basically loved like my natural appearance. I wasn't really too quick to like put on a wig. I only did it every now and then when I didn't want to like do my own hair. So, and with the head covering, it really wasn't hard for me because sometimes, like, I would take, like, a scarf and just twist it up in the front and have, like, a little big donut in the front yeah. because I thought it was cute. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was right. For me. So, it, was, it wasn't uh, hard for me at the beginning. At the beginning, everything seemed so easy. I was, like, one of those people where they was asked, like, how is it going? Like, how is I said, oh, it's easy. But when I stayed in <laughs> a couple of years, started ending up, it started to get hard. So, yeah, mm -hmm. in the beginning, it was easy for me. As like time go on and on, it gets harder for me. But yeah. yeah, yes, it does. It really does get harder because you know sometimes because living or being around the people that we are around, like even people that living in our homes, you yeah. know, it, it's a struggle. So always that with you is in. Is that a struggle with you? Or are you living alone? So that's not a problem. Uh, I'm actually living uh, alone now. It's just me and my son. But originally during my transition, it was very hard. Like with family, like they did not want to accept it. It was like, uh, like I had to pray for them because like they were so used to seeing me like in dresses that were very short and they wasn't used to me covering my body. So they're like, what do you have on? Like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so 
like they would just talk about me and say I look like somebody trying to be funny. So and it really made me feel bad. Like yeah. my own family. Yeah. Like why can't you just really accept me for how I'm changing? Like when I was like out there like partying and dressing half naked, like y'all were for that. But now that I'm trying to better myself and grow closer to God, like it just was like they was just talking bad about me. So I had to pray for them and pray for me as well because like I was it was hard for me dealing with them talking and joking about how I was dressing. So, mm -hmm. but eventually like they, they're comfortable with it now. They don't say anything. It's normal for them to see me dressed like this. So they grew, it grew on them. So I just thank God for that, that they were able to accept me as I start to change. So. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Because, um, even now when I see some people that I know, they would say, if I saw them and they they don't call to me or something like that, and I'll call to them, they would say, I didn't even know that it was you. You're dressing up like an old man and stuff. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, I just, uh, I didn't, I just don't pay that no mind and continue to greet them. But you know, it's, it's, uh, as you said, we got to pray for them, you know, that they can accept us for who we are now. So, oh, has the struggle been so far? And what are some of the things, if you would like to share, that you struggle with? Mm, struggles. I guess, like, now that I've, like, started to change and have changed, like, I lost a lot of friends. I don't talk to a lot of my old friends like I used to. So, that's a struggle for me, like, not having the same friends and wanting to, like, reconnect with them. But when I reconnect with them, I know, like... There's nothing really we can talk about because <laughs> we're not on like that to, on two different page now. And it's like hard. That's a, like a struggle for me. It's hard for me. Like sometimes I'm like, man, I need, I want some friends. Mm -hmm. there. So I guess that's like one of the struggles for me. Learning how to just be to myself and not really have friends. Yeah. Like that. That's so true. Friends. Um, so... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more on the personal side with you because I realized that uh, you were in the army. I, I am actually still in the army. I'm oh. army yes. <laughs> Wow. So let's talk a little bit about that. And you graduated with honors? I did. So, uh, hello. Probably like four or five years ago. I joined the army and with my job, I graduated with honors and I, I only do it like part-time. It's not like a full-time thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. And the, um, what about lifestyle? Because I see that you like to exercise, right? Oh yes. I love exercising. <laughs> I, I, I realize that your face <laughs> lights up when I, when I talk about that. So let's talk about that. I love fitness. I love everything about sports. Exercising is just breaking out. So right now I am in the middle of taking a class online to be a certified personal trainer so that I can just help, like, help motivate other people that want to be physically fit. Mm -hmm. And I'm also taking a nutrition class as well to just like help people um, in the future um, better have a better eating lifestyle for people that struggle with that. So, That's yeah. good. I love fitness. I love working now. <laughs> and I try to help motivate other people as well to work out. That's nice. So you're like a coach thingy. Like if I'm in the gym, you, you would come there and, you know. I try to help motivate you. Try to figure out what all you want to like, like your goals as far as. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to oh. lose weight? Do you want to um, just have a better eating lifestyle? Or you just. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I'm just there to, like, help uh, motivate you and help you get to where you want to get uh, as far as the physical fitness-wise. Okay. Wonderful. And you say your son, you have a son. Oh, yes, I do. Um, God willing, he will be 11 next month. Oh, it's big. that's big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when um, you say son, I thought it was a bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's big. I get that a lot because a lot of people think um, I'm younger than. Yeah, because you look young. You look like you're in the teens. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, I <laughs> have some little questions here for you. Um, what's the weirdest food combination you have? The weirdest combination food? Mm, I don't know if it's weird, but like I like popcorn with cayenne in it and, ye and nutritional yeast. <laughs> like, <Ooh. laughs> like I eat it for breakfast sometimes. I don't know. It's like a weird addiction. It's really yes, good. It is. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> but it is your liking. Yeah. All right. Do you have any hobbies? I don't think I have I anyone in particular, but like, I love basketball and mm -hmm. I love like watching f football on TV. I love sports. I just love watching. I love doing football around. Like I love all types of sports. <laughs> oh, so you love sports. So I what do. kind of, do you play sports? Do you play any sports? I don't now, <laughs> but when I was in high school, I played volleyball. Oh, I was, were you good at it? I was okay. I wasn't. I'm not very competitive. I just like to do sports for the fun of it. I'm not very competitive. I get it. I get it. Um, how do you like to spend your free time when you're not working and you're at home? What do you like to do? Um, free time. Just be at home. Like being at home is comfortable for me. It's safe. It's. I feel free. Like I love being at home. Watching mm -hmm. a movie and just relaxing is like the best thing ever. Or just going outside and taking a walk by water, any place. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Um, do you have any pets? Pets? No, but I don't have any present pets right now. Okay. Um, what kind of skill would you like to master if you haven't mastered them all already? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I'm actually in the middle of like sewing. So it's something that I really want to master. Like I love clothes. So I want to learn how to like make clothes and sell them. And also because I'm short and a lot of clothes that I buy at the store, like I have to like trim the bottom. So I want to like personally customize like dresses and skirts for people and for myself. That's nice. What is your favorite food? My favorite food? Um... Different from the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I love pasta. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm a plant-based eater. So I mm -hmm. don't eat anything that comes from am animal or anything mm -hmm. like no dairy or anything. So, <laughs> so I'm trying to learn how to perfect my dishes as far as like being plant-based. But I love pasta, like noodles. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. That's nice. What is something you always wanted to learn? I think it goes kind of back to sewing. Because, like, right. yes, I right. always wanted to sew, but I don't think I started taking it seriously until now. And mm -hmm. trying to perfect it and make it a skill. Okay, wonderful. So, sisters and brothers that will be listening, what's the encouraging word would you offer them? Mm -hmm. Just don't lose sight on the main picture, which is God, and just stay focused on God. No matter like what friends say, what your family say, or just people that you're close around, or just anybody in your circle or close to you, just like focus on God. Let that be your main focus, and just keep striving. Let close everybody out. Like get get along to yourself, and just like put your mind on God, and don't let anybody distract you from God and just focus on like getting closer and closer to him and just like block out the world and just focus on God. Wonderful. It was so great to have you here. Just a little quick chat with me. I hope God bless you in everything that you put your hands to as long as it is pleasing to him. Me talking can like help somebody else. So like I had to stop being selfish and start thinking about yeah. other people. So that's true that's true and and the whole aim for this is to encourage mm -hmm. encourage young boys encourage young girls even older folks just encourage because we are all going through things sometimes you'll see us and it, it will look like everything is okay and you know but yeah. we all go through struggles and it is it is wonderful especially when i'm at church and i hear the testimonies it just encouraged me so that's the reason why I know this can be very encouraging to people as well. 
Yeah. And thank you, Whitley, for being here. Thank you. This has been an encouraging word with me, Sister Bonnick. Bye, guys. Bye.